Man, the last couple months have been really busy. The rumor concerning Blue Protocol's Founders Packs and the head start that will accompany them, Wayfinder and Ion Classics, delays, Tower of Fantasy, merging servers together, and a surplus of other new MMO releases. And that's not even half of what happened, yet what I'm going to be covering nonetheless. I hope you have snacks ready. But before that, I wanna let you all know that I have a second channel just titled Sticks that I post on every single day. This is dedicated to MMOs, gacha games, RPGs, just general gaming, covering the best and the worst the industry does. Consider coming on over and joining me there. Also, let me take a moment here to give a quick thank you to every one of our patrons. All of your guys' support is invaluable and I cannot express in words how much it means to me. Finally, if you haven't already, follow me over on Twitch. I stream there every single weekend. Now let's go ahead and jump into this week's weekly bite of MMORPG news. Let's start this off with Wayfinder. Wayfinder is an MMO that Mrs. Sticks covered a month or two ago during its beta test phase, and she had a lot of fun in it. At the time, the game was under NDA, but we were given access and allowed to release our footage as part of their collective of creators given exclusive permission. After the beta concluded, the Wayfinder devs revealed that they would be holding a follow-up beta during April, accessible globally. Which turned out to be a little overzealous, as the beta test has now been delayed to May 10th, with the early access also rescheduled to at some point in summer 2023. While we do understand delays are impossible to predict and absolutely necessary in the MMO world, as first impressions are everything, it's nevertheless disappointing as Mrs. Sticks and several of her gamer friends were all already preparing to play together. Two years ago, Albion Online released their mobile port of the game, which saw player numbers for the game propel themselves to 271,000 active players daily meaning there were potentially half a million, maybe a million players logging in and playing the game across PC and mobile platforms. And while concurrency and active players have continued to decline to an extent over the last two years, this happens to every MMO and is not a sign of a deteriorating or dying game. With the recent launch of their new server, titled Albion East, Albion Online has reported that the game has set even larger records with 277,000 total active players playing the first day alone and two weeks later breaking over 300,000 active players. These are absolutely monstrous numbers and I gotta give it to them. When I played this game years ago, I never anticipated that it would achieve concurrency records that could make it the most played free MMO on the entire market. Wonders Eternal World is a brand new upcoming anime MMO that seems to be channeling some serious MapleStory 2 vibes. I covered their announcement trailer when it was first released, but since then the devs have announced that they're going to be holding an early access test phase beginning Tuesday, April 18th, lasting through the 20th. This early access is only going to last a few days and will be exclusive to PC players. Ion Classic has existed within North America now for years. Europe, however, hasn't had the same opportunity, unfortunately. Until recently, when Gameforge and NCSoft came to an agreement, likely due to the decline in revenue within North America. Originally, Classic was supposed to release in March within Europe, but Gameforge remained silent throughout the month. And then April came, Gameforge confirmed Classic's release would be delayed to April 12th, which evidently didn't happen, as it has not been released yet. And then came the most recent announcement, the game has been delayed to April 25th. <laughs> I mean, there's a little bit of a incompetence here, a little bit of negligence, but I guess we'll see if they can stick to this one. Amazon and Smilegate push out more frequent updates for Lost Ark than almost any other free-to-play MMO, with the most recent patch rolling out on April 12th. This patch introduced a slew of content, dungeons, raids, new gear, multiple quality of life adjustments, and bug fixes. Perfect New World, the newest MMO from Perfect World Entertainment, opened an official Steam page for their upcoming title earlier this month, with some information, a full trailer, and then relative silence for roughly a week. After which, they made a post over on Steam confirming they were recruiting for their upcoming closed beta test, which begins on May 4th and then runs for a yet undisclosed length of time. Pre-registration is open, and I covered this a few days ago, so if you're looking to try out the sequel to the original Perfect World in all of its glory, this might be your chance. Nexon isn't really a studio that I'd say necessarily releases quality titles. Nevertheless, they did recently launch their newest title, Wars of Prasia, in South Korea. 
Wars of Prasia is very much like their previous mobile MMOs, with the difference this time being that it's cross-platform compatible between PC and mobile. Yet after having seen gameplay, I can confirm that the PC iteration of the game is a very basic PC port of the mobile version, unfortunately, or is it fortunately? I guess you could be the judge of that. Nexon hasn't confirmed a global release date yet, but it is coming. The Dune Awakening YouTube channel has been pretty active recently as they continue to upload a series of videos detailing various different aspects of the game and what players can look forward to. As an additive to the video footage, Funcom, the studio in charge of developing the game, noted that they would be providing information with regards to their closed beta in the next couple months, so that's something we can look forward to receiving soon. Tower of Fantasy released their most recent update, Patch 2.4, a couple weeks ago, bringing players underwater for the very first time. And while definitely important to note, something of even more importance is the confirmation that the studio is planning on not only releasing several new servers, but also merging a lot of older servers together. The announcement of new servers upset players due to how dead servers already are, which is where their announcement of merging servers helped dissuade players from lashing out and probably quitting. These merges are going to begin on April 17th, so prepare for some downtime. Earlier this month, Jandisoft, the studio behind the upcoming Mad World MMO, announced that they would be releasing on April 27th. This is after repeated delays over the last several years. As we approach their release date, the devs are also detailing a number of important things, the cash shop, which will include leveling boosts, a season pass, and some features. Mad World, specifically, is going to be a fully cross-platform MMO, playable on PC, console, mobile, and anything else that can run a game via browser. The studio behind Bitcraft, an MMO announced back in 2019, just revealed that they have an overwhelming 752,000 signups for its upcoming pre-alpha. Yeah, that is two-thirds of a million. If the game releases with half those numbers actively playing, it could be one of the largest MMO releases in years. Hot off the success of their most recent beta test, the studio went on to note that they learned a lot and will attempt to implement that knowledge in future pre-alpha tests, which they also state are coming in the next several months. I got to participate in the most recent network test for Blue Protocol, and played roughly 30 hours of content over 3 days, most of which was streamed. And while I'm sure many of you have watched the full anime trailer Bamco released after the successful conclusion of the test phase, the more important thing worth noting is that there are rumors abound of Founders Packs, which are likely to be true given Amazon will be publishing the game and a potential 7 day head start. I would definitely purchase a Founders Pack for this game, and would anticipate it to both cost and probably provide roughly what the Lost Ark packs offered. And that's it, that is all of the MMO related news that mattered to me today. If you think that I missed something, please let me know down in the comments below and I will make sure to take a look. Until then, I got you covered with two different videos that you need to check out. One featuring every single MMORPG launching this month, the other featuring every single gacha game launching this month. You won't regret wasting a few more minutes of your time, trust me.